Hi guys, how's it going? Ivana here, back with part two of the Shield Tech Guide. So in this part of the guide, we're going to be focusing on gameplay. So basically talking about how to play tank in PvP. And if you haven't seen part one of the guide, I will link that in the description below. And I recommend that you check that one out as well. So without further ado, let's jump into the game. Um, we're playing in a pre-med with an AP Power Tech, uh, Carnage Marauder, and our Mercenary Healer. And the first thing you should always do as a tank or in fact, as any class in the game, when you're going into an arena or a war zone, take note of the classes on your team. Um, and also take note in this, in the case of the arena, on the, of the classes on the enemy team. So in this game, we can see um, the enemy has two assassins. Now, we're not sure whether they are deception or hatred at this point. But on our team, we have a power tech, who is, of course, a very squishy target. So before the match, I'm already thinking, what are they probably going to do? And my expectation will be that they will open on the power tech. So in my head, I'm already thinking about guarding the power tech um, as soon as I can. Even more basic than that, you're a tank, so please make sure that you use your guard ability even before the round starts. You can see I have it applied to our healer in this case. That is a very good baseline, um, and I still see tanks in war zones, even arenas that are not using guard at all. And yeah, if you're not doing that, then what are you doing? Good, we're going to jump into the game. So here we go, we're running in, we are looking at targets. We can see our healer gets zapped, means they're probably not going to target them, and they're planning indeed to open more power attack. Um, we're jumping in again, you're a tank, so you want to be in the middle of the action and focus on getting a good carbonize. Jumping in here, we're getting stunned. We are sitting that, actually we're breaking it with Kolto, and then immediately get a bubble stun from the sorcerer. Now the, the sorcerer heal makes a mistake here, he should not be right next to his tank. And you're going to see in a second why. Now the assassins open. And you can see this is a beautiful situation. Even though our healer is kind of out of the fight. And for some reason the assassins decided to open on our marauder. We have four people stacking in a what looks like a three meter area. So this is a great time for carbonizing. And that's exactly what we're going to do. Why is this so important? So another way to think about carbonize is instead of thinking about it as a two and a half second stun, you can think about it as a two and a half second 100% damage reduction for your whole team that comes with a built-in root and a damage buff for your whole team. So this is what an, what an AOE stun basically means, right? They are locked in place, my DPS are going to do more damage, and they're not going to take any damage outside of dots anyway during the duration. And this is why Carbonize is extremely impactful and one of the most important things as PT but then especially as PD tank is to focus on getting good carbonizers. With good carbonizers, I usually mean um, a carbonize where you hit three or four players, or a carbonize where you hit two very important players and secure a kill. So we're going to let the clip run. Carbonize was really good. We're getting the pressure, and now we're focusing on doing max damage. Now. An important thing to mention here is that our comp is single target comp, so we don't really have a lot of AoE, right? We have Carnage and an AP power attack. So what we want to do is we want to quickly put pressure on single targets and force the tank to um, having to choose between doing damage and guard swapping. Maybe to explain a little bit of the, of the concept of how you play arena, why skank tanks are better than defensive tanks, and the concept of pressure. Um, and you can think about it in, in a very simple way. As a tank, you can only do two things. You can focus on swapping guard, or you can use your global cooldowns on doing maximum damage. What we want to do is we want to have pressure. So my game plan is if I can force the enemy tank to focus on guard swapping, then they will not do as much damage as we are. Meaning, of course, that I will not have to worry so much about guard swapping as the other tank. But the other tank will be, you know, on his heels trying to keep his DPS alive. Um, and because we're having the pressure, that will at the same time reduce the pressure that the enemy team is, is able to do. And that's usually why it's better to run a skank tank that can put out more pressure than a defensive tank. Because then over time, if I'm going to be doing 10k DPS and both of my DPS are doing somewhat in the range of 13 to 14k, then eventually the enemy team, um, even with guard swaps, will just run out of HP. And at some point in the game, 
two or more players will be low and then the tank will not know who to guard anymore and one of them is going to die. So yeah, that's our general game plan and we're going to see how this falls out. So the enemy tank is fighting bravely, he is swapping guard, whoever we're focusing, but eventually the damage is just too big. You see we get another form and carbonize, which is really good. Now lightsaber is already getting low, he gets guarded, this is good. Um, at this point, for some reason, my whole team is at pretty much 100%, except for me. But I'm not too worried, I still have um, Kolto, I have medpack, I still have um, energy yield, so I'm fine here. And I can just focus on spamming flame sweep, which is exactly what I'm doing. Spamming flame sweep, doing maximum damage, heat blasting in between. Not too worried about that hard stun. Now the assassin's going low. We're doing damage. We get another carbonized, and at this point, someone should die. Right now, this is the situation where the enemy tank is is in quite a quite some trouble. Um, so his his lightsaber is low. He himself is going low. The healer is at fifty percent. Um, and his other assassin is about to die. So who is he guarding here, right? And this is exactly why um, skank tank is stronger than defensive tank. If you can do damage to the whole team, then eventually you're just going to win. Um, and rather sooner than later, right? We are just barely a minute into the game. So we get knocked back, but no big deal. We have hydraulics. We run back into the fight. They're still stacking with spimming flame sweep. Happy days all around. Doing maximum damage, this guy is about to die. And off screen, our power tech uh, got the thermal detonator off on lightsaber and just kills him. So uh, we weren't even on him. He just dies from, from all the pressure. And the game is pretty much over at this point. Quick look at the breakdown at the end of the round. You can see we out damaged everyone in the enemy team. Um, and yeah, this is exactly what I was talking about. If you play Skank Tank, you can do 8, 9, 10k DPS. Um, Juggernaut usually does a little bit more than that even, um, but it, if you can do that, then you're basically as good as, or almost as good as a third DPS player. Um, yeah, and you know, no healer in this game is, is going to heal 33k uh, HPS, so that's basically the game plan. Going into round two, let's see what happens here. So we're running in, and our Marauder finds two assassins actually, which is pretty nice. Um, if you manage to get an opener like this, where you can get two people out of self, you see the tank is over here, the healer probably just placed face walk, then um, it's fine that you immediately turn around and open on one of these players, since they're going to be separated from their team. The tank cannot guard them, the healer cannot heal them, so they are very vulnerable, which is exactly what we're doing. We're going on lightsaber, he was our kill target anyway, you can see he is marked, and we are starting to do damage to him right away. Our power tech joins in, and at this point, the tank and the healer are forced to come down and fight fight us down here, which is of course great for a power tech tank. You always want to focus in these kind of um, choke points in these narrow spaces where you can use your full AOE potential. We get knocked, use hydraulics. Um, we really want to focus on getting a good opener, getting as much damage off as possible, again, so we can put the enemy team under pressure and force them to react to us. Damage, damage, damage. At this point, we see the healer. Immediately, we're thinking we want to carbonize. Doing some more damage. Our oil slick is already put down, which is great. Slowing the whole team and giving us the pressure. The enemy tank has not responded yet. So now we're running in. We want to carbonize on the heal. Actually, we want to swap on the heal and kill the heal. Um, at this point, I think there was some call in the in our Discord chat. We're getting ready to, to get carbonized, but here we get low slashed. Um, you can see on my screen that this is a low slash. We cannot break it with Kolto, but our determination is, is available um, because Kolto will only break hard stuns and low slash is of course not a hard stun. Um, now we make a little bit questionable decision here. Uh, we decide to break the low slash in order to get some pressure on the healer. Um, not sure if this was actually correct, but sometimes you can do it just to get the pressure out of the opener and get the upper hand in the fight. Um, so we are going to use our breaker. Our DPS are already on the heal. So we're going to break and immediately carbonize. And you can see the healer is dropping, taking massive damage. And I think in a second, because tank is not guarding him fast enough, he has to barrier. So sometimes you can do something like this, even if maybe that breaker was questionable. Again, SPT, I still have my call to as a second breaker. 
and it's fine. If you can use your breaker to get a source or barrier, right, that is a way more valuable cooldown. So I'm happy to make that trade. Carbonized him. Now we're going to be doing damage, 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 damage. And at this point, the enemy DPS decides to start playing the game. And their game plan is to tunnel me. Now, that is a valid strategy. Um, tank tunnel is, well, some, some players think it's a little bit of a cheap shot strategy, but I mean, I think it's fair play. If you're going to be playing a tank basically as a third DPS, then it's fair game to kill them, right? Because a uh, skank tank cannot guard themselves. So they're deciding to tunnel me. All of their players are basically only attacking me at this point and trying to kill me as a, as a skank tank. Um, so I'm just making sure I'm using all my dev cooldowns and telling my team to support me by using their taunts, by peeling for me. Um, and what you can do against tunnel is, um, you know, forget about guard swapping anyway, since they're only trying to kill you. In some cases, you can even drop the guard because, yeah, AOE will still um, do double damage to you. And, you know, if my healer is, or my guarded target is getting random damage, that will be extra damage that I'm taking. So you can drop guard. I think I decided not to do it here. I basically just pop hydraulics uh, in a second and decide to kite it out. Again, we already got this healer's barrier earlier, so he's under immense pressure. And um, this is maybe the you know most, most important lesson of this game too, is even if you get tunneled, don't forget about doing damage. Um, tank at the moment is really about how good you can disrupt the enemy from doing damage while also doing maximum damage yourself. So, you know, they're tunneling me, they're going to kill me eventually. So we have to kill them first, right? It's a race, so keep doing damage. I'm getting tunneled, I'm getting stunned. So I'm running, I'm popping Colto, I'm popping Hydraulics, I'm running away. I'm already white barred. They can't really chase me. I have Carbonize soon, so this is when we go for the kill. Another nice Carbonize, you know, at least a three man, probably a four man. And now the healer cannot do anything, no more barrier, and he just dies even though he was guarded. And that's pretty much game. At the end of the round, 2 million damage, roughly 8k DPS, and we did more damage than all of their team. Here you can also see the difference between um, you know, uh, a tank wearing defensive gear and a tank wearing DPS gear. Um, you know, uh, Maybe there was also a, a little skill gap here involved, uh, definitely had the better teammates. But, you know, um, if I'm doing three times his damage, there's pretty much no way they're winning this game. Moving on to round two, we are playing against uh, Guardian Tank, Guardian DPS, and Marauder DPS. Uh, again, analyzing the comm quickly, I think we should have an advantage simply because they have three melees. We have two power attacks. Power attack is really good against melees, you know, again, because mostly of Carbonize. So, you know, right out of the gate, I'm thinking we're going to have an advantage here. Our plan is, of course, the same. They're going to stack. We're going to do maximum AOE damage and just kill them that way. And I think their plan is probably going to be a similar one as well. They should be trying to kill our power tech DPS here. So running in, charging at this guy. Getting some good damage off on him. He is already dropping to 50%. And here we're getting another nice carbonize. Damage, damage, damage. The Marauder is dropping low. Marauder is at 50% at this point, and so is the Guardian. Marauder gets stunned. He actually almost dies here. He has to use his Breaker and um, Undying Rage. Uh, and I think that, yeah, this round really showed the importance of getting a good opener, right? So they were just a little bit slow on getting their damage off. We, I think, did a good job. We even got damage on two targets. Again, their tank. Cannot do, uh, cannot guard two targets at the same time. Um, so basically, you know, this guy used his breaker, used his undying, which is his big cooldown. The guardian already used what looks like saber ward and is currently at thirty percent. So right out of the opener, we are in a very good position. Uh, it's going to be really hard for them to recover from that, right? We are all at hundred percent. They have basically done nothing so far to us. We have done a lot to them. Um, and again, since arena, uh, at least in this patch in Star Wars, is basically a damage race. Yeah, there's pretty much no way we're losing it here. So they get some counterplay now. We get stunned. They get to do a little bit damage, but we're just doing our thing. We're looking to do AoE. We're spamming. We're staying on the target. Our Marauder is going crazy on their unguarded healer. 
Damage, damage, damage. No one is really taking any damage on our team. Now our healer is going a little bit low, but he's fine. He has all his cooldowns. We quickly swap guard to him and he's absolutely fine. And their healer is in a world of pain, getting absolutely mauled by Captain Obfuscate here. And it's going to have to barrier pretty soon. So again, the tank, I mean, he had the right idea. He was doing a lot of damage, but unfortunately he kind of forgot that we have damage dealers. Forgot to guard his healer and now the healer is out of his big cooldown. The Marauder is out of his big cooldown. Um, and well, the Guardian never had big cooldowns to begin with. So we keep doing damage. The Marauder comes back. We get a nice Carbonize. And again, because of all the pressure we had, they have no more breakers and the Guardian dies. At this point, of course, it's a 3v4 and there's no coming back. We're just focusing on good guard swaps, making sure the Marauder is not doing any damage. Swapping now to Reaper Ball. You can see his target up here, and I'm just making sure that I'm always guarding the target that he hits. Doing some more damage, and the Marauder dies, being out of cooldowns. Game over. Another pretty good game. Uh, we had one of the enemy DPS um, out damaging us here. But yeah, 8k DPS, I think it's it's alright in a round like this. The other tank with a lot more protection, but it doesn't really matter. Damage is what wins games. Round three, again, we are focusing on, on a good opener. But here we are a little bit split. Um, and they actually get the opener on our power tech, who is very quick to pop shield. <sighs> Wasn't probably not necessary to pop shield at this point because I'm right next to him and I'm going to immediately swap my guard to him. So quick guard swap, I mean, it, it is important. Um, but at the same time, we don't want to forget about offensive play. So immediately when I see this, I'm thinking I want to colonize pretty soon. And indeed here I get another three-man carbonize, which is really good. And we're going to be starting doing our damage rotation. Huge firestorm. Get stunned. We break it immediately. Oil slick to keep them and deadly onslaught. That's the combo I was talking about in the guide, of course. Damage, 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 damage. Guarding my Marauder again. You can see uh, they're doing a good job. Like they were not bad players. Unfortunately, we were just a little bit better. Guarding my Marauder, and again, their Marauder already has to use his big cooldown here. Gets guarded, swapping guard to Reaper Ball. He gets a nice Carbonize, which allows us to do more AoE damage. And, you know, slowly over time, we're just winning the damage and cooldown race. They're swapping to our healer. We're guarding him. No big deal. He's going to be fine. Doing damage, doing damage, and the Guardian dies. So this game at the end of the day was pretty much won by the fact that they were a triple melee comp running into double power attacks. We got a couple of really good carbonizers um, and could abuse their, their positioning or of course, you know, their, them being a, a triple melee comp. Game number three, similar thing. The team that we faced earlier, only that now they have a lethality operative instead of the second assassin. We're running in and the plan is exactly the same. We're going to be focusing on good carbonizers and doing maximum damage. Quick guard swap on Kiddo. And we're going on our target. Getting a carbonize. We were hitting three players here again, so that's pretty good. Damage, 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 and target almost dies. Gets guard swapped. Now we're all swapping to the healer. Gets guarded, but he drops very low. Looks like he actually barred there for a second. We keep doing damage, they keep stacking, and yes, they do have a lethality operative who's probably doing 20k DPS at this point, but overall I'm still confident in our team's ability to just out-damage them, especially since they have a deception assassin who's not that great when he's under pressure like this. Damage, 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 we have Carbonize coming up soon, we're going to use it right here, we get everyone, and this is pretty much the, the, the game winner at this point. Now we do get um, barrier stunned by, by the heal. And I think if I remember correctly, I'm using my breaker offensively. This is something you can do sometimes. If you're confident that you can secure a kill with it, then, you know, use your breaker offensively. You know, looking at the at the upstreams here, all my team is at 80% or above. So again, we have the pressure. The enemy team has no pressure. And my goal is to secure the kill. So I'm breaking this soft stun. And together with my Marauder, I finish off the heal.
and that's it, game over. This was actually a pretty good DPS round. We were doing almost 11k DPS here, which is solid for a PT tank, and was the best round I had in this evening of arenas, almost out damaging our APPT. So round two, by now you know the drill, same game plan, we're gonna be running in, we're gonna focus on doing maximum damage while keeping our team alive. This looks like a carbonize if I've ever seen one. Three players, here we go. Firestorm from the back. Big damage, you know, that's uh, 130k or something immediately out of the opener. That's damage that, you know, their healer will have to take care of at some point. So, really good. Dropping our puddle immediately to kind of lock them in place there and deadly onslaught. But now I should know the combo. I'm letting my other power tech know that I'm pulling in the healer. And I'm pulling him here, letting him know to carbonize. And we're doing damage to him. Unfortunately, get bubble stunned, but that's okay. Keep doing damage. More and more damage. Heat blast when it's on cooldown. And then spam that flame sweep. It's really not, not very hard to perform well on PT tank. Firestorm. Jump in. Spam the flame sweep. Flame sweep. What is this? Carbonize is coming up soon. 3, 2, 1. We get another Carbonize. This time maybe only hitting two players, which is why they live longer than they normally should. Our Marauder is dropping low, but I have fullest confidence in Kiddo's ability to manage his defensives here. So we're going to, using, going to be using our global cooldowns to maximize the DPS. More and more damage, and pretty soon the operative is running away. We see him, we have pulls ready, and we're pulling him back for the kill. Eventually the team dies and even the tank falls at last. And yeah, I think the last game was, was a nice little demonstration of the difference between a skank tank and a defensive tank. Again, doing uh, three times as much DPS at, uh, as the Vanguard tank here. And, you know, and this is just something that the enemy healer over time cannot outheal. So this is why Skank Tank is really strong and why you should consider playing it uh, in the current meta. By the way, this of course also works in 8v8. I just wanted to showcase it in Arena as I think the strengths of PT Tank are a little bit easier to see um, in, an, in an organized format where both teams kind of at least you know have the same um, comps with a, with a healer and a tank and four players on each team. So that's it for today. Hopefully you enjoyed this little guide. If you would like to see more guides or you would like to see something else, please let me know in the comments below. And hopefully if you enjoyed the video, please leave a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys tomorrow.